Let's try Jay from Florida again. Jay, you back up. Listen, th that's, this is why you can't have too many friendships in the front office, right? Give me the Jazz front office. Give me a GM and a coach that don't even talk, right? <laughs> this, this makes the situation more successful. The Noel deal, like you said, you go pick Isaiah Jackson at 19 and slot him in for four years for a crazy discount. He could do the same thing that Noel's doing. Tibbs is just happy to bring that vest because he knows what to expect. He doesn't want to do his job. You got all them old men in the front office. They don't want to do their job. They get comfortable in signing. There's no way Burke should be back. There's no way Noel should be back at that number. You sign Isaiah Jackson. You go find a wing in the draft and go build him up. Grimes could start. Grimes could pay uh, Burke's role. Like, come on, roll the dice and get it going. How are we ever going to get to a championship if we're giving out these kind of numbers to these, these marginal vets? How are we going to get there? If championship will bust me every time. I don't care about getting to the playoffs, getting to the second one. I don't care about that. We want to eventually win a championship. Where's the talent? How are we going to get to a superstar? You think Dame is in his crib right now saying, oh, the Knicks just signed back Burks and Noel. Let, let me call up Leon right now. No. He, he, there's nobody coming to there's nobody coming to save us. Right? They World Wide West is an idea. I hope he's listening to me. You you an idea right now. We we hired you to make it happen in free agency. You're not doing anything. Beale is staying home with wifey in DC. They ain't moving. Nobody's moving to come save the Knicks. You got all this cap room for next year and nothing is moving. What's the plan? What is the plan? How are we going to get to a chip? How are we going to get superstars? They say we negative on Twitter. Oh, y'all bad fans because y'all negative. Y'all don't know nothing. This is what I'm seeing. I'm not seeing any progress this year. You go sign for you for $18 million, that's a huge chunk off your cap. That's almost damn. That's a, that's, a, that's a max. Just call that a max, $18 million. That's a, that's a major play in your rotation. Aaron Fonier, is that, is that what's supposed to make me excited? <laughs> RJ and, and Randall, is that how we went in the championship? I don't see it. I don't see Jay, it. Jay, I, what, I don't type, what type what type of off season would make Heide. you happy? Listen, I'm a four, I'm a I hated the four I, I hated the winning the nine games in a row. I hated all that. That's all that was all house money. That that was all track. That ruined the whole offseason. The Knicks should have been in the eleventh pick. We'd have walked away with Moody, we'd have worked away with, with, with Murphy the third, we'd have walked away with one of our one of our targets to play that wing position long term. That was the setback right there. The playoffs was the worst thing to happen to this team. Look what look how free agency's turning out. I know they probably hate me in the chat, but look how free agency's turning out. But they we do, but they the do, trust me. They, they, they throw tomatoes right now, fam. Hey, <laughs> yeah, I know. I love the chat, man. Give me one, give me zero. Come on. Pile it on me. Rate, one, rate the call in the chat. <laughs> rate that call in the chat. One from the worst Brooklyn five better. to the best. Someone give a negative ten. Yeah. <laughs> give me negative. Give me negative. Come on, give me negative twenty five. I want it all. But the East is going to get better this year. Cleveland yeah. going to get be better with Mobley and Sexton with another year in his belt. Boston is going to get better. Atlanta, you already know. The Bucks, Philly. What are we seeing with, with Burks and Noel coming back and Evan Fournier? Come on. With, with, a full, with a full crowd of tennis coming back? I see a regression coming, right? They're not doing their job. Don't just run it back and say, oh, just give us another year. It's another year every time. They're not making the big trade. They're not showing me anything that proves that they want to win a championship. So what's the point of World Wide West? What's the point of Leon Rose? I don't see it. I'm gone. All right, man. Hang in there, Jay. Rate, rate, rate that call from one to five. One being the worst, five being the best. Do you agree with Jay, man? There's there's a lot of Debbie Downers right now, fellas. I, I think there's a lot of people that would agree with them that don't want to admit it, man. Uh, I would say that the the guy, the teams that he listed, like the Jazz, so forth, they haven't won a championship yet. That's so a fact. That's a fact. Like... You know, like they're not, you know, there's so many ways to like build a team. Uh, I'm happy the Knicks made the four seed. I think it's a good step in the right direction in, in, in progressing and development. I think you're teaching these guys how to win and how much work it goes into winning. You can't just have a bunch of young kids leading each other. It's just the blind leading the blind. Like I said yeah. last time, look at the Sacramento Kings. Where have they been? They haven't even made the playoffs. And yet they got Fox. They got Bagley. They got uh, Heald. They, they got all those guys. They got Hal Burton. Where, where are they at so far? They haven't gotten anywhere yet. You know, shout, like for the Atlanta Hawks, they got the right coach in uh, McMillan who just was able to take over because Lloyd Pierce wasn't doing his job. You know, he was able to galvanize those guys. But they also have a top-tier talent that they drafted in uh, Trey Young, you know? Yeah. Listen, so. man, it, it's it's expectations. Expectations through the roof. You know, I told the guys in, in the pre-show SNY, I said, listen – 
fan base is going to be tight, man, because this is this is a lackluster free agent class as it is. We made it to the fourth seed. We got washed by the Hawks, so they felt like this season was a failure. Coming to the draft, you punt on the 19th pick. You know, it's a lot of it's a lot of moves that the Knicks made that the the impatient fan is just not going to be happy with. And and I understand Jake's frustration. To be qu- to be quite honest, I understand the frustration, but at the same time. You know, sure, the Knicks can call Portland right now and tell them, hey, we'll give you every single young guy we have plus every single pick. Bring us Dame Lillard. All right? You, you want to win the back pages that way? Okay, fine. But that's still not putting you anywhere closer to a championship. Kawhi Leonard is not coming here. He's coming off an ACL injury. He's going to be out the whole year, and he's staying with the Clippers. Who's next down the line? You got, you got three of the, of the greatest superstars in the league right now and one team in Brooklyn. You got the freak building his own thing. You got LeBron and AD on their last run. Who's the next guy? Booker's in the Suns. He's he's good to go with CP3. You got the Spider. He's in he's in Utah for right now. He's not a realistic option. It's not that many options, people. I've been saying this for every single year. The NBA is the hardest league to build a championship. Luck plays a huge part in it. As we go. Let's go rapid fire with the calls, man. What do you guys think about free agency? It's it's pretty much done, man. Ice water. What's going on? Hey, what's going on? What's going on? <clears throat> How you feeling? I'm all right. Hey, listen, um, you know, I like the Evan Fournier deal. Uh, I wanted Fournier as a, you know, I was hoping the Knicks could have got him at the trade deadline. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and I, I like it. Uh, you know, Evan Fournier always killed us when he, you know, when the Magic played us. That's a fact. Um, you know, I like I like they got back Burks. I've always liked Burks since he was in Utah. I thought he was a really good player. I'm glad he got – you know, I like the fact that they brought back the core. Mm-hmm. Um, you know – just as long as they're not bringing back the, the Toast Brothers, you know, I'm, I'm good. As long as the Toast Brothers ain't coming back, I'm good. Wait, wait, wait. Who's, who's the Toast Brothers? The Toast Brothers is uh, uh, Alfred Payton and uh, Frank Nitlakina. <laughs> Burnt Toast and French Toast. <laughs> That's the Toast Brothers. As long as those dudes ain't coming back, I'm good. Um, Appreciate the call, Reg. Appreciate the call. Rate, rate that call right. to the chat for one of five, man. Reg in the chat. Hey, Reg kept it simple, man. As long as the Toast Brothers ain't here. <laughs> Salute to Reg, man. Now, Alex from California, what's going on? Hey, how's it going? Originally from Westchester. Okay. Um, Salute, bro. Just really, Let's just go. Really, underwhel- really underwhelmed with all the moves, you know, like. If you told me we would have done what we did last season, signing guys to one-year deals, you know, I would have been fine with that. But tying up everyone to three-year deals, just overall, it's mediocre. You know, like, mm-hmm. you either get a star or you tank and get one. I feel like we're just going to be – we're like the Knicks are like the new magic. We're just waiting for first-round exits for the next three years. So, yeah, just really underwhelming. Yeah, it's it's a gamble. We're just going to have to wait and see how it plays out. There has to be a flip coming soon, man. By next year, it has to be a flip coming soon. Because that's the only way they're going to realistically but, upgrade this team. But besides draft assets, besides the picks, who do we have that we can actually flip? I don't see Fournier being one. I don't see Maryland. I don't know. I don't know, man. So it's just, just disappointing. Yeah. We've been through enough, us as a people. <laughs> us as Knicks fans, we've been through enough. So, it's yeah, PTSD, Alex. It's I, I know the pain, man. It's the PTSD, man. Hang in there, bro. Just, just let's wait and see, man. Ride it, ride it out and see what happens. Uh, Juan from New York. Juan, what's going on, bro? Hey, what's going on, man? How you feeling, Juan? I'll, um, good, good. I just want to say I'm a fan of the show, and I'm excited, man. The Knicks made some great moves. Fournier definitely steps in for Barlock, and he, he's a 20-point scorer per game, close mm-hmm. to that. He's like a poor man's uh, Clay Thompson. And I love the starting lineup, man. If you're starting D-Rose with Fournier, you got RJ, Randall, and Robinson. If Robinson can stay healthy, Man, the Knicks, the Knicks are definitely going to be a top four seed again, man. And you got Grimes and McBride. Yo, like, the, the Knicks, I, I don't know why, like, a lot of fans are upset, but definitely got to be excited. I like the moves, man. Okay. So, some optimistic optimism from Juan. Okay. Appreciate that. All right. All right. We're, we're falling in line with the rapid fire, J.D. Jeff from Maryland. Jeff, what's going on? Hey, man. How you guys doing? Good, man. How you doing, Jeff? Good, good. Yeah, I just want to say I love this Evan Fournier, uh, like this signing because you know, in the playoffs, Trey Young was just chilling on Reggie Bullock that whole series, not having to do anything but just running around the three point line. 
So that's automatically a plus five wins. Uh, letting Alfred Payne go, you know, that's another, like, plus five wins, honestly. Like, although we didn't do much, I love the fact that we're running it back and just kind of betting on our young guys and developing quickly and having, like, giving bigger responsibilities to RJ because we can't baby him forever, you know. He's got to be the face of this team. Thanks, guys. Uh, well, let me hear from Justin from the Bronx. Justin, what's going on? I'm good. I'm good. I'm chilling. Um, I just I find it funny that everybody says a few years ago, let's all be patient. Let's all be patient. And now that we're actually all patient, making steady, good, level-headed moves, everybody's in the uproar, begging for the same thing that put us in a bad position just a few years ago That's with a Melo. That's a but, fact. man, I'm just here to enjoy it. I think we're building a great foundation. Fournier is actually a really good signing. Can score from all all over the court. I mean, like, what more do y'all want? Y'all want to give the Rose in the bag? And he's in his 30s already. I mean, hey, to each his own, though, you know. Yeah, man. That's it. Man. Appreciate it, bro. Justice, Justice saying the course. He's with, with it, man. He's laid up and with it, man. Ron from Brooklyn. Ron, how you feeling? I'm feeling good. What's up? How you doing, bro? Yeah. Man, I'm good. Um, I like the Evan Fournier uh, signing. I really do. I think that's kind of an upgrade from Bullock. Mm-hmm. Uh, Burks is nice, but it's an upgrade as well because Fournier is bigger. He's, he, and like my man said a minute ago, he could score from all over the court. But I'm really thinking, and I like Dane Tom. He's a little older, and it kind of brings me into Carmelo. It reminds me of the Carmelo situation. But, mm-hmm. man, I'm telling you, Colin and Sexton, we can snatch him from what I was seeing from all of the information, I mean, you got Toppin. I like Toppin, but we already have Randall. So, at this point, you could use Toppin and a couple of other pieces with the draft and go ahead and get sex and let's go. That boy's a dog. So, that's what we've been needing is a dog, a young dog at point guard that can run the offense. Let's go. I mean, it, it's time to go ahead and make a move. Let's close the show with Angel from Philly, man. Angel, what's going on, man? For years, you know, we always, you know, had bad contracts, you mm-hmm. know, and – when you look at all the contracts that we have, I know I was a little surprised with the Noel deal. You know, I didn't think they were going to give him, you know, what, what is it, $10.5 million per year. 12. But all these contracts are yeah, movable. 10, 10. You know, when you look at the free agency next year, you know, um, obviously, you know, these players aren't going to want to take discount, you know. So when you sign these max players next year in free agency, you're going to have to have money that you can move also. So when I look at these contracts, it doesn't really scare me that much because we can always move it later on down the line. But I like the fact that we brought the same team. Now, with this free agency, what it tells me is the front office, they really believe in these coaches and the development of these players. So I think it is really crucial that we, you know, develop these players because even if we can make a trade, you know, for like, let's say your Dame, Portland ain't going to say, oh my God, give me quickly give me Obi give me Kevin Knox you know like you've got to develop these players so that's why I think it's really crucial that you know Tom Tibbs you know he plays these young guys because you know when it comes to making a trade for these superstar players if it happens you know we got to show them like hey we do got talent that we can trade also because right now you know no matter what superstar you look at ain't none of these teams going to say oh we want Kevin Knox plus the draft pick, you know, so we definitely got to, you know, build, build, build everything. But, hey, listen, man, you know, um, when it comes to the point guard, I was going to ask you guys this question. Now that we resigned Rose, because I thought that was really big, would you rather just keep Rose on the bench and put in um, Alec Burks maybe to play no, the no. point guard? No, because, no, 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 um, no, no, no. Bur- I, I just don't know. Is, no, Burks I just don't know. Not going, no, man, we're not going through that again. Cold. No, Bur- Burks is your – Burks is like in baseball when when they bring in, you know, the the left fielder to pitch for you. You know what I'm saying? This is like last case scenario, you know, when you, when you just have nothing left. And, yeah, at times he could come in and get the job done and, and fill it in, fill in for a spot. But you don't want to start with Alec Burks. He's not a, he's not a point guard. 